Hi again, Pina Trogo again, San Francisco State Information Design class. This is going to be the number uh, two item on the second project, number two in the layout. Um, and it's going to be a, uh, a bar and line chart of the California cases since the beginning uh, about a year ago, um, January 25th, 2020, actually. Um, so this is going to be in Tableau. And before I start that, I'm going to go over the um, data set. Uh, so again, this will be in iLearn uh, with folders, numbered folders. And uh, you already got the, um, I got the data set from the New York Times uh, GitHub uh, repository, which is the public data that they put out. Um, go to item one to see what that is. Uh, anyway, from that, which was actually this, I believe, yeah. Uh, they're all comma separated value, but you can open them in Excel. And the way it was set up, it's not a huge file, but it's pretty good because it's got, let's see, it's got 300 days times 50 states. So, uh, whatever, whatever that is, um, 50,000 maybe uh, points. So, what I did um, when I actually got it. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, it's actually already, I mean, I can't remember now if it was already alphabetized uh, as well as with the date, but um, I just wanted California. So I, um, yeah, I just went to, I, I scrolled down and I basically said, okay, California, where are you? Um, I just started to grab this and, And I went down to all the days and into 2021. Oops. I lost that. Okay, here it's until February. Okay. So simple, I just did this. I just copied this this, this part, which um, it's all the California data. Um, but let me just quickly show you what's in this data set. So you have the date, um, I'm gonna let it go because I already saved it, but I, eventually I would have done a paste. So I've got the date, I've got the state, just repeats Alabama. FIPS is actually important. It's a, a geo, um, geolocation code. Um, so that if you drop it in Tableau, it will recognize it and it will make a map out of that. We're not gonna do that now, but it's very important. And then cases and death. And once again, this is cumulative, right? So I guess in the next data set, I had to, um, oh no, because we, it's in Tableau, I didn't do anything because we can do it all in Tableau. So I'm gonna quit this. This was called US states, comma separated value. Um, I made my own copy and I kept it with the same name in a different folder. So if I open it with Excel, let's take a look. Yeah, it's basically just 396. Uh, so this is more than a year because it started out. Um, okay, so in January, there were already cases, interesting enough. Okay. Um, and yeah, that's it. So that's the data set I'm gonna bring into um, into Tableau. And um, once again, I'll, the data sets will be in the folders, but not the Tableau file. You have to create that yourself, okay? Um, and make it a little bit big. So we're doing exactly the same thing. It's just a different, it's just lower numbers, I guess, because it's just one state. Although California, I think right now has the highest number um, of any state. Um, so yeah, so once again, what you would do is you would, you would click here 
when you open and you would say connect to a file and you would say in this case comma separated so you say text file and then you navigate to your folder and find it and i would pick that one okay i'm not doing it because i already have it in so cancel um and it's and it's this one right which i made and i don't know what i was trying to do there Oh, I make it. I made that too, just just to just to see it. And you see the days, the deaths, and the days are much more um, variable. Um, so anyway, this is the one we want to do, and this is the the trend line here is important, right? The moving average, because again, one day you could have maybe twice as many deaths as or you had um, as, as you know the day before or the day after. Um, I'm actually getting my first shot of the vaccine tomorrow, so hopefully that will make me relax a little bit, although I'm not. Um, anyway, um, so let's just replicate this. I'm going to make a new, a new sheet, and so once again, we click the date. Notice that also the state also has a I don't know if you can see it, but the state already has a geo. Um, we're not going to need it here, but it already has. It's, it knows it's a, it's a state, right? So if you click on that geographic row, you see it's already set as a state. Sometimes you have to tell it, and the date is already a date, and the cases are the numbers. So I'm going to click on cases. I'm going to go a little faster. I'm going to click on dates. So that would be a, a measure and cases would be a dimension. So I get that simple line. I'm going to go to the uh, the date and instead of being a year, I'm just gonna say day. Let's see if that changes. There you go, this was quicker. Um, yeah, so I just went to, um, there's somehow two days Days. This is all about dates. Somehow there is a year, quarter, month, but there's two of them. I'm not sure what, why that is. Maybe because we have week number or weekday here, and here we don't. Anyway, whatever it is, just pick this one at the bottom day, right? And it gives us that. So now we want to, um, let's see, if we make a bar, we get that. I'm not one mess with it now. Um, so bar, you change that here in the marks, right? Instead of automatic, you just pick bar. Um, and then um, we want to do the calculation so that instead of doing cumulative, we do um, subtract from them. So if you look at the data, um, right? What we want to do actually is subtract uh, this each number from the one before, right? So let's see where we are. So again, un in under cases, you'd click and you go to um, add, add table calculation. And the default, what you know, it's basically what we need, which is the the subtraction, right? Um, and it's the subtraction from the previous, right? These are the defaults. So table across, difference from, we could have picked something else, but that wouldn't have been good. Um, oh, percentile. I don't know what that is. I think that's, yeah, I see what happens when we don't know. So let's just change back to uh, difference from, and okay. So now we want to add the line. So we have to overlap the same information on top of this. So we we take the cases again and we oops, and we drag it until we hit the, almost the edge and it turns into a dotted line. It means that it's going to put it on the same axis. Um, now we have to do the same thing we did before, right? So we go to here, that's the second one appeared here. By the way, by, by doing that, see, yeah, actually that's the way to do it because it allows it to overlap it. 
Um, so now I'm going to do a calculation. Um, and it's doing, of course, the same thing. But now we want to do instead the, um, the moving average, right? So the trouble is I have to do the moving average first because otherwise it doesn't let me do the second calculation. It doesn't let me do the difference. So if I start with the difference, I won't get anywhere. So I start with the moving calculation, which is going to be the moving average. Uh, and we'll turn that into a line eventually. So the moving calculation will be here at the bottom of this menu. And then here, I have to pick these other menus. These arrows are really tiny. I wish they were a little bigger <laughs> um, right here. And instead of sum, I want average. So it's going to calculate the average every seven days. And I'm going to say seven days here. I suppose that means days and seven there. And now nothing has changed. But now you see, now this has appeared, which means I can do a second thing on top. And it did the difference, right? So it did the difference. And that's what we want. And now we're going to just simply change it to. Um, in the previous video, I turned the bars into a line first. So let's see if we can just make sure now we change it. We change this one to a line. So right here, instead of bar, we'll change it to a line. And that's OK. This looks funny. Um, so what's happening here? We have two lines, and one is the days up and down, different values. One is the average. Doesn't look quite right. Doesn't look like an average because the scale is different. But let's do one thing at a time. Let's change back. At least we have everything we need. So let's change back the first one. And somehow I can. There we go. Selected. Um, so let's change that back to bars. OK. And looks like it gave me back the colors I had originally. But let's mess with it a little bit. Uh, less opacity, edit colors. Yeah, they're, they're correct. Um, under color, also get rid of the border. So instead of automatic, say none. And under size, we want to make instead of fixed, we want to say manual. Hmm. If that, let's say fixed width in days. Um, I'm not sure what this is. Let's see. Oh, there you go. We learned something new. So actually, this does allow us to, um, it does look like the spacing is still not even, but, um, but this does allow us to control exactly. OK, I'm not sure if this is what I want, but I got the bars. OK, so now the reason the average is not correct in between the long and the short bars, which would be the average, is because the scales here are different, right? Because it's taken that scale, which was always going up. Um, well, whatever, it's a different scale. So what we want to do is like that and then this um, we want to synchronize it and that's it and that's what we want and that's pretty much um, what we had in the New York Times if you recall uh, except this was for California so this you it would go by state which would be here you click on oh I'm already in California just bear with me for a second Let's say we would find um, the list. It's loading. The maps themselves are the ones that are a little hard to load. OK, here's what we want. Uh, and then if I click on total cases, California comes up because we have the highest And that's our chart, right? So let's see if that's similar to ours. Yeah, I mean, the proportions are different, but, um, and the colors are different. Um, notice also that 
And this you could do in Illustrator, okay? In Illustrator, you could add this little, um, oops. You could add, there is a little bit of a gradient or a halo, uh, like a, that's filling in the line. So that's nice, actually. Usually I don't like gradients and fills, but here I think it's good because it defines that shape a little better. Um, so, okay, so this is now done. And by the way, what we can do here to make it cleaner, we can also um, uh, remove these axes by saying, don't show it. Show a header, instead don't show it. And now it's cleaner, right? I don't know, does the New York Times take it out? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we would wanna move these things. I don't know how to do that now. I'm sure there is a way to um, format and put it closer to the graph, right? Um, okay, so I'm saving this and just to see what the deaths look like, it's different. Um, but I suppose you could do that. Um, it seems okay to, seems consistent to keep cases, right? For the three levels of US state and then county. So I'm saving this. Again, this is what we just duplicated. Uh, you see how the New York Times labels the lines themselves instead of having a legend, right? Makes no sense to have a legend, but that's the default. And it looks pretty good. By the way, there was a weird thing on August 20th. Oh no, this is something else later. Okay, um, this is done. So this is, I think, the fastest so far. And I'll see you for number three, which is gonna be San Francisco cases. Bye-bye.